Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a how-to video for you on setting up an LED lighting system for the Billy bookcases that are from the IKEA store. Uh, this is a completely custom uh, LED system. This is not something I bought from IKEA and just installed. Uh, so this does take a little bit of time to put together, but as you can see here from the image, this is what it looks like as a finished product. Uh, I will go over the uh, parts that I used and why I used them in this video but this system here can actually be used for any kind of lighting cabinetry that you have or any kind of uh, shelf that you have it's actually pretty customizable one thing I would like to suggest that you guys do uh, while building this out is do like you see here do a test on each shelf before you actually go through the entire wiring setup just make sure the connectors are good the lights are in place where you want them because uh, these the 3m that's on these lights can be removed on this type of shelf because it's not a very tacky shelf but once it's in there it will hold but you can actually pull this off a couple times and move it if you need to but again uh, definitely go ahead and do something like this and actually test each shelf out before you start doing the wiring it's going to make your job a lot easier in the long run even though this will take a little bit more time for you to finish this project So at the beginning I did get two different types of LED strips to use. Uh, this one right here was from Amazon. It's just your standard LED RGB strip uh, with the uh, four pins so you can do the RGB and W. Now I wanted to go with these just to have the option to do the RGB if I wanted to but I was never really going to use it anyways just because it's a display case. <clears throat> but right here you can see that the amount of LEDs on this are, I, I believe it was about 150, uh, somewhere around there, not too many. Just again, your standard RGB. Now, I ended up not going with these, and because these are what typically everybody goes with uh, for their cases. But what I did was I went with these guys right here. These are COB LEDs. Now, this is just a standard white color uh, strip, and it has this little silicone coating over the LEDs, which diffuses the light. Uh, it looks yellow here, which it is, but when you turn on the lights, it's actually a bright white. It's a 6500K illumination here. <clears throat> now, this is just using the standard positive and negative. Uh, I'm trying to get this in focus here, but it's not working too well for me. But I wanted to show you the reason why I went with these over the, the RGB strips here. <clears throat> because as a display cabinet, I wanted to light up what's in the display cabinets. But here you go. That right there is actually the camera trying to focus in on how bright these lights are. Um, so you can see why I ended up going with the COB lights on the left here instead of the RGBs on the right. Just mainly because of the brightness of the one on the left. I, I wanted to actually be bright white and show the objects in my display case and actually display them in natural color. So I'll have this linked in the description below for you. Now, once you have your lighting in place, uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and cut the strips into the lengths that you need. Now, every copper option there has a line in the center to where you can cut them down to size and you have to cut them at that size. Um, but here, I've got everything cut for the size of the shelves that I need uh, for the Billy. And then I just have this connector at the end with the positive and negative. Now, this connector right here is what I'm using. I'll have this linked for you as well. It's specifically made for this type of uh, LED. So you put it in on one side, crimp it down. The other side is made for the uh, positive and negative cable. And there, the reason why I'm going with these options here instead of doing the solder is because I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. And I'm trying to make this more of a modular setup so I can actually move the shelves if I wanted to and not have to redo the entire wiring. Now, these strips do have a ground and a positive on them, so I am making sure that when I put these connectors on it that the ground is always facing up, as you can see here, so that I know when I'm putting the wires into the other side, I always know which one is going to be the ground and which one's going to be the positive. Uh, the reason why I'm having to put a little bit more effort into that is simply because the wires that I bought are actually black because I want them to be hidden behind the cabinet. So once you have all your cables set up, uh, here is one that I have actually taped down onto one of the shelves. So you can see it goes full length across. And you'll notice that I actually have the ground facing the back of the shelf. 
as well. And I'm doing that on every shelf. That way, again, I know exactly where the ground is going to be placed on these cabinets because all the wire that I'm using is black. Now, I have it again taped it down and I have the connector on the side here. So again, you can see the ground and the positive, which way they're facing, and then the, the black wires that I have connected into it. Now, the spindle that I have here is actually a four wire spindle, and all I did was just take the wire and split it in half, so now I've actually got twice as much uh, cabling, uh, so you don't have to buy multiple spindles if you don't need to, uh, but it's gonna be dependent on your actual cabinets and how many you're gonna be doing. But I've got one side into the connector here, so I have the positive and negative. And the way I'm going to wrap this wire on the shelf, I'm gonna be using some 3M tape, but I have it set up so that the inside wire is always gonna be the ground. So when it comes out the back, I know that it's the wire closest to the center of the uh, cabinet, which is gonna be my ground. Now, these connectors right here that you see are what I'm gonna to use to connect on the back end of this cable. And I'm doing this again so that I will be able to disconnect them and move the shelf accordingly anytime I want to move the shelf up and down. Now these are pretty straightforward. Just put the positive and negative inside the hole, crimp it down, and they just connect together just like the connectors inside of a vehicle. So let's go ahead and show you how this all works once it's all plugged in. So here I have the light connected to the connectors and the connector connected to the actual uh, controller that I'm going to be using and you can kind of see how it looks uh, just set up here with the connector in place again one thing that I want to point out here is these connectors they are identical in every way so because you are actually reversing these connectors you need to make sure that the positive and negative on one connector is actually the opposite on the other so if you have the positive on the top side on one connector when you flip it over you need to make sure the positive is also on that side as well otherwise you're not going to get that connective uh, connectivity between the two wires so that was the one thing I didn't like about these adapters they didn't actually have an adapter for each side um, and when you look at these adapters it actually does have an indicator for the positive so if you were following the design then it would never work so again you just make sure when you're putting this together you do have you know your positive and negative actually running on the same sides when the connectors are actually reversed here so that was one of the only issues that i really had here um, outside of that the connectors have worked pretty well i've um, every once in a while i would try to push them in together and i would actually bend the wire i can just use a little small screwdriver or a uh, a fingernail clipper file you can actually just stick it in the thing and bend the wire back out but all that happens is once you have everything done, you just uh, snap them into place like that and, and that's it. So that's why I'm utilizing these on these shelves because I can easily pull them apart, adjust them, and move them around. Um, so if you do have any questions on this specific portion, please by all means leave a comment below and I'll, I'll get back to you on, on anything that I can help you with. Um, now this controller that I bought is a wireless controller and it supports RGB. RGBW, uh, just positive, negative. It supports you know five different styles to it, and it is controllable by a phone. I don't think I'm ever going to be utilizing that, but I have the option if I wanted to. The power adapter supports uh, anywhere between 12 volt up to uh, 54 volts, so you can actually put a pretty hefty uh, uh, power supply on this. The one that I'm using here is a 120 volt. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, 120 watt, 24 volt uh, power adapter. And for my setup here, that's gonna be more than enough. And the reason why I say that is because each spindle of those LEDs that I'm using can do, I believe it is 30 watts per entire spindle. All right, so I do have one of these installed. Now, this is just a simple installation on this one right here. I don't have any of the stuff or uh, really wire managed on the back but you can see how i've got it tied in and then i have the connectors right here and then using a dremel i just poked a small hole big enough for the wires to go right through the cabinet and to be quite honest unless you're looking for it you don't actually see this uh, hole in the back uh, again these are made to be adjustable so now you can see why i did it this way um, and what I have on the back here is again, I have all the wires coming through the back of the, the unit here. 
All the wires do go up to the top of the cabinet and I do have them into crimpers. So I'm using the red for the red wire and the, the blue for the ground. And I have everything into these crimp crimping uh, connectors. And then I also have another wire here which is actually going to the top of the cabinet. This is what's actually gonna be plugging into the power supply itself. So I made sure that was long enough so that I can actually run across all four cabinets, but I have it coming down here again into a crimping uh, connector, which goes into a female connector, which then goes into the male connector, which goes into the power supply. Now the reason I have this kind of setup is because I've got four different cabinets and I'm gonna be connecting them all into one splitter. Uh, from that connector, I then have that switch that you just saw there, and that switch goes into the power supply so that I can actually physically turn it on and off with just a switch. Now this uh, setup will allow me to turn on all four cabinets with just the one switch that I have there. Um, <clears throat> keep in mind that uh, this adapter that I'm going to be using here, the splitter, they do come in just a, a one to one. They come in a one to two, one to four, one to six. So it really depends on which, uh, how many cabinets you're going to be using uh, as to which one you would want to buy. I mean, if you really wanted to, you can have a, a four splitter and actually use that splitter to light four different shelves if you wanted to. It's really up to you, but that's how I did it here. So now that I had all the four cabinets done, I have all of them mounted into the wall, all of them set up, all the LEDs on there, and here's how I have the wiring done up top. So I have each cabinet wrapped up to the top, and they're all coming into the splitter, which all goes into that power on and off switch. So here's the controller that I was talking about, which has the uh, male connector, then that female connector goes into that splitter right there and each splitter has uh, four pieces on it and I'm only using one. Each one of those is connected to the positive and negative for each cabinet. And again, that all runs right back into the power supply which has an on and off switch. Now one thing I want to point out here is I am maxing out the wattage on the switch that I have. Uh, so when you turn on the lights, you're going to just wanna have them on for a short amount of time if you do this kind of setup because the power connectors are going to get extremely hot. Now, I have not ran into an issue to where they were too hot to where I couldn't actually touch them, but it was definitely hot enough to where you could tell there was a lot of current going through it and that it could potentially cause an issue if you leave them on too long. So if you're worried about that, the solution is pretty simple. Just go ahead and get two different splitters um, and connect those splitters into two different controllers, two different power supplies. At that point, you now have a 120 watt power supply running two different cabinets and you're never gonna come close to about half of the wattage that those units can do. Um, but anyways, here's the finished product. As you can see, the lights are actually pretty pretty bright. They're, they're nice and clean. They don't have any anything that's really making it stand out to look like a cheap job. Um, I do have these, as you can see, they're connected with a 3M tape, so everything is nice and snug out of the way. Um, when you have the cabinets closed, you don't really actually see the LED lights. So I'm actually happy with how this turned out. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, let me know in the comments below.